Today I'm going to show you how to run uh, sample programming code from ChatGPT or sample computer code from ChatGPT. Uh, ChatGPT usually writes the code in Python by default. You can also specify for it to write in Python. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do it with Python in this example. But you can actually have it write in samples in other scripting languages and programming languages. Uh, just as a caveat, whenever you run any sample code from any source, make sure it's a legitimate source and be careful. Uh, ChatGPT uh, writes simple uh, programs, and as long as you're running a simple program, uh, you should be okay. And I'll give you a couple of tips along the way just to look at the code that you're running to uh, be a little cautious about it. Uh, but you should be okay with most things with ChatGPT. Uh, it, it's kind of programmed so the chat GPT isn't going to uh, intentionally write code that uh, would harm your computer. Uh, they have safeguards on it for that because that's one of the things they're concerned with, with AI. Anyway, with that, a little warning in uh, um, let's get started. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. Let's go to Google. And uh, I want to install Python, but I don't want to install a full version with all this stuff on it. That's pretty complex. So we're going to install something called Portable Python. And you'll be able to actually install this on your hard drive or even on a USB drive and take it around and run simple Python programs from uh, this installation. So we're going to do a search for Portable Python. And we don't want the first one up here, actually. We're going to scroll down until we find the one on SourceForge. This is actually a different portable python uh, the better one is down here under source forge and it's called portable file python download so we're going to go here and we're going to we're going to just download uh the file here and uh what will happen is let's see we'll get a file that looks like this and so we'll say portable python and it will say uh the version number and everything uh this is to run on uh, windows uh if you're running on Mac, you may have to look up a different version of Python. Or if you already have Python installed or you want to ins install another version of Python, you can do that as well. But this is just a simple way to do it. All right, so we're going to run this program here. And it's, it's going to want to extract it to a folder. We're going to extract it. We're going to specify the folder. By default, it would go into downloads, but I'm going to put it on C colon backslash portable, and I'm going to just extract that. And all it does is it it's already has kind of a pre-set up basic version of Python that's in this folder so that we can run Python and then run a script. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to, uh, we're going to go to C drive and we're going to scroll down and we're going to find uh, portable. And you see that it installed a directory um, called portable uh, Python uh, in the version number. If we double click on this, you'll see there are programs in here. So we're going to want to run the console launcher right here which will run a command line version of um of uh, python but first i'm i'm going to put a subfolder in here so i'm going to create a new folder and i'm going to call it my code and this is where i'm just going to store my code samples and the samples that i get from chat gpt so i'm going to go in here and so now i'm in uh, my code and I'm going to create a new document. And it's going to be a text document. And you can see right here, I can see the uh, extension, the ending dot text. What you want to do if you don't see that is go here to view and go to show. And we want to click file extensions. If I click that off, you can see you don't see the file extension. But we want to see the file extension because it makes everything much easier. So I'm going to go here, click on file extension. And so I have the extension. That way I can change the extension to a dot py which is a python extension and it will will uh, be able to uh, read that text file as a python or will recognize it as a python script uh, so it will make things much much easier so now um we have this text file here i'm going to open this up and uh, here we have notepad right here i'm going to write a quick python program and this is it this is the hello world program in python it's very simple we're going to write the word print and then a parenthesis and uh, a quotation mark and then hello world exclamation mark quotation mark and a, a parenthesis make sure you have that exactly as it is there and you'll be okay and so then we're going to 
save this and we are going to rename this file so um let's rename it and we want to make sure we re change the extension to so we're going to totally rename this and we're going to name it um we're just going to name it hello.py all right so now we have a hello world script the reason we're doing this is to test our python installation so we're going to go back up here to portable python we're going to run console launch and now i'm going to uh change the directory here by default it, it, it it's running python from the directory we installed it in so we're going to go change directory and put my code and so we're in the my code directory if we hit dir it will tell us what's in here and uh, we see hello.py is the only thing in here so i'm going to type python hello.py and hit enter and you can see below it just says hello world all right so now we have python installed within a directory it's not within the path of our system or anything uh so it just runs within this directory. If you copy this directory to a USB drive or to another hard drive, as long as you go into the directory and run uh, the Python console, you'll be able to run Python. So with that said, let's generate a script from uh, ChatGTP and run the code. So we're going to go to ChatGTP, and you should be able to do this in the free version, or if you have the paid version, uh, you'll be able to create simple code. Uh, from it, I'm going to say, uh, write a simple Python script. So uh, here's a simple Python script. All we're going to do is we're going to go up here to copy code. And I'm going to go back to our hello world example. I'm going to just use the same file. So we're going to go, uh, you can create a new file if you want. But since we already have a, a file in here, I'm going to just paste it into this. Or actually what we can do is let's just um, go to save as. And under my code, uh, make sure you go down here and go to all files. And now we see our, our hello world.py. We're going we're gonna to resave. Uh, it is another name. Uh, so uh, let's just name it sample1.py. Make sure you have the .py on the end uh, so it recognizes it as a Python script. We're going to go save. Then we're going to go back to our Python um, console. And uh, we're already in my code. If we hit directory, you should see it sample1.py. So I'm going to run uh, Python sample1.py. And uh, then I'm going to hit enter. And then it, it prompts us. Uh, first number so let's put one second number i'm going to put seven and so it adds them together and we get eight so that's our simple python uh code and that's how you run a, a simple code from python uh let's go back and look at the code again real quick this code at the top doesn't have any any uh included uh libraries or anything in the top of it so if you see on a python script the word import at the top and this is just if you don't know any programming you want to be a little bit cautious if you see see import os like that at the top of the script that means it can do things like uh, access your operating system like delete files and stuff so that would be like if you don't know anything about programming you want to uh, proceed with extreme caution if you see uh, something like that or anything suspicious in it where it's trying to do something with a file or it looks like it's trying to do something with a file uh and the only reason i go into this like i said i think it would caution you itself and, it, and it's it has safeguards designed in it but just uh to be overly cautious uh i want to make sure you realize yeah you got to look at the code a little bit and use some common sense and if you don't know coding at all uh you want to be very careful maybe even run it on a on a different computer but you should be safe with most examples and uh, uh the other thing that you can do with with the python code is let's go back here let's uh let's ask uh chat gpt to write sample code that it can run. All right, this script will keep uh, running until the user correctly guesses the number. It's fun. Now, I don't think it can run. No, it's... So let's just say uh, run code. Secretly generated by the script is 60. If you'd like to play the guessing game yourself, you can run the full script in a Python environment. So it will actually run some of the scripts as long as there's no user input in it. Uh, so uh, let's say write hello world script. In Python. 
All right, now uh, let's go run script. And so it shows you what the output is right there. So, And that's what we got uh, in our own Hello World script, which is basically the same thing. All right, so that's how you can run code samples. Once again, be a little bit cautious. If you're running a very simple script, you'll probably be okay. But if you have any questions about it, just don't run it. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, that should help you uh, out if you just wanted to see how to run a script uh, in uh, using ChatGPT samples. I'm Dean, and this has been Dino's Tech World, and I'll see you next time.